What is up, guys? Welcome back. We are here once again for this time. It is the prediction show for WWE's PLE Money and the Bank, which is being held this year in Las Vegas. It was originally slated to be held at the Allegiant Stadium. It has since been moved to a more intimate environment at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, being held on Saturday, not Sunday, which is a nice change. Um, I obviously know they've kind of dabbled in the past with Saturday pay-per-views and AEW of course has done it in the past. Me personally, I love a good Saturday pay-per-view or PLE, whatever company it is. Uh, just something different about having it on a Saturday night, you know, especially, of course, this is a holiday weekend, so it's a little bit different because a lot of people are off on Monday, but you know, normally speaking, when Sundays are the big nights for whatever the show is, it's it kind of sucks knowing that you're going to stay up late and having to get up early on the Monday morning because you normally, you know, want to start the week off fresh. But uh, that being said, this weekend is an anomaly since the holiday is on Monday. So regardless, uh, me personally, I'm, I'm still kind of happy it's going to be on Saturday to kind of get it done and out of the way, kind of focus on everything else going forward. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday um whatever you end up doing uh if you end up celebrating if you don't end up celebrating uh just stay safe guys and uh enjoy yourselves whatever you do but with that being said we will get right into the card here the card um obviously i think probably drastically changed um or at least the outcome and the original story that was heading into it that being the focus point on cody Rhodes and what we all were expecting for him to, obviously, when he, of course, did the um, promo video back, what was that? When did that promotional video air? I don't remember the exact month, but they had filmed him in the stadium, ironically enough, as well. Um, kind of morbid when you look back on it, but anyway, he they had filmed him at the stadium and mentioned that the winner of the Money in the Bank has the chance to punch their ticket, essentially, to the main event of WrestleMania. So that was kind of foreshadowing, in my opinion, what the obvious journey was was most likely going to be. That having Cody start his his quest for the championship at Money of the Bank, right? So it's definitely a huge blow and a huge change in plans, most likely to WWE and obviously enough Cody. Um, but with that being said, I think it's kind of cool. And I, like I mentioned in a, a previous podcast, gosh, probably a couple weeks ago now, um, I think as much as it sucks and I'm as much as I know it's probably well I I know it's painful just by looking at the shit that the the dude went through in the hell in the cell right and just the the visual of the injury itself you can only imagine what it was feeling like on the inside so to go through all that I think yes the setback sucks but it's going to make for an even bigger comeback because the okay the we all, at this point, have either we watched it when it aired live or we have seen, gone back and watched it since, the return of Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania and how big the reaction was and the, the feel of the moment, right? So imagine now going forward, and like I had mentioned what in whatever episode it was, the, and I was thinking back on it, it was probably the episode he got injured, <laughs> um, just makes sense, but timeline-wise, I think... You hold Cody out until the Royal Rumble, obviously. Have him make a huge surprise return and then have that be his start to, and obviously, and ironically enough, pun intended, his uh, road to WrestleMania, right? Which the Royal Rumble is is always been that, that beginning uh, journey and that beginning, that first stop to WrestleMania. So it's only fitting for him to make his triumphant return yet again at Royal Rumble where well, most likely all your fans there will have it in the back of the mind that may, you know, most likely Cody Rhodes can return there. And if he does, like, just imagine the reaction his music is going to get. We we thought his pop at WrestleMania was big, and I can only imagine it being probably five, ten times bigger. And and I'd, I'd actually be t- kind of surprised if it wasn't. So that's just kind of my <laughs> long way of getting to the card, um, even though I said we're going to get right to it. But in my opinion, it's it's kind of important because I think that obviously, like I had mentioned, changed a lot of um, the direction that WWE was going to be going in. So with that being said, we will finally get into the card itself. We do not have a world, universal, WWE, whatever you want to call it, any type of heavyweight championship representation here this year on the Money in the Bank PLE. So the rumors and what later became to be pretty obvious 
speculation that Roman Reigns was not going to be defending his title at Money in the Bank is is pretty set in stone at this point, obviously. Um, that was pretty much made certain when Brock Lesnar returned and they announced the last man standing match at SummerSlam, just completely bypassing Money in the Bank and, and anything else and all the weeks building up to it at that point, or rather for that matter. Um, so I think that's, you know, it kind of is what it is and I'm not going to really focus on that too much here because I want to kind of stay focused as, as much as possible, but it is kind of glaring and it does kind of suck in my opinion, you know, I mean, they're lucky that you have guys and, and, and females, for that matter, in, in your respective Money in the Bank ladder matches that make it feel like a big enough deal, especially in the men's more so this year with your Seth Rollins and Riddle and um, Drew McIntyre, you know, for, for that matter as well. But it's, I don't know, it, it still does feel like it's missing something. And I kind of feel for the people who spent probably a decent amount of money, especially being in, in Las Vegas on 4th of July weekend, nonetheless, uh, to be there, and especially if they went there just for that show in particular. So I can only, like I said, imagine what they paid for travel and, and stay and all that. But like I said, or I guess I haven't said yet, but like I was um, going to gonna get to, with, with that being said, uh, the fact that we don't have a world ha- world championship match on the card, I think it's still going to be a pretty solid and probably a sleeper show. Yes, Money in the Bank has kind of moved up in the ranks, pay-per-view or PLE-wise, you know, um, and and kind of forged a a big five in the PLE world at this point, but, and some people have even kind of, I I still, again, I'm not going to get too much into that here, but it kind of hurts my heart just thinking about how much uh, I used to love Survivor Series back in the day, but a lot of people are saying that they, you could easily make a case to remove Survivor Series from the big four and insert money in the bank in its place so that's a debate and a discussion for a different pod which i think would be kind of cool and i'd honestly i'd I'd love to hear your guys feedback as well on that um hit me up on twitter at ashmanns or of course on the show's twitter page at kickash podcast underscore but moving on i'm going to start not necessarily at the bottom of the card but just not with the respective ladder matches so uh, in Side note, I do think one of the Money in the Bank ladder matches is going to open the show, and I think it will most likely be the women's. It just kind of makes sense to book in the show with the matches, and it's kind of similar to Elimination Chamber matches as well. It just kind of makes sense, you know? Um, Nothing really groundbreaking there. But I do think it will be the women's match that will be opening, and then the men's will kind of close out the paper or PLE here. I was doing so well up until then. But... The opening, or the actual first match, I guess, after the Money in the Bank match, um, which I'll still, even though I think that's going to go on first for the women, like I said, I'll kind of start in a different order and go with the first actual one-on-one match here, and that will be Theory versus Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship. Uh, This, I feel like it can either kind of go one or two ways. I feel like this is either going to be... match where Bobby Lashley is going to dominate and just kind of run through Theory as as crazy as that sounds with how much hype and and push I guess you could say that Theory has been getting but it can either be that or I think it's going to be a good 10-15 minute match somewhere in between there and then at the last second Theory is going to do something grimy and, and cheat to win and retain his title so I think it really just depends on what they plan to do with Bobby Lashley going forward, in theory also, and if if they plan on having Theory face John Cena in the near future, and if they want that to be for the U.S. Championship, because, I mean, we all know at this point the terrific run and kind of, I don't know, not obviously a tournament, but just the, the challenge, I guess, just to kind of keep it simple, the open challenge that Cena did when he was the U.S. champion. Um, and I know I've, I've talked about that here in the pod as well in the past. It was just, it was a great run that he had doing that. And it was just fun. It was something that I personally look forward to each week seeing. But with that being said, I, I th- it's actually kind of hard to make it a solid pick here. Um, crazy enough, because a lot of people kind of don't, give a shit about this match or just think it's a throwaway match or a waste or whatever and that Bobby Lashley should be in the title picture or just multiple different things and and reasons why this match is just looked down upon by a lot of people but I think this is going to be a good match like I said if they at least get enough time and I think what I'm gonna I think I'm gonna have Bobby Lashley win here I think that and you know as I say that I can part of me it, it just part of me is torn because 
I can see you wanting and making a case for Theory to have a long and substantial title reign. But I think with how they're presenting his character right now, and in the sense that he's not really the most serious guy out there, and he's more focused on taking selfies and stuff like that, I think it would be a good story to have him lose the championship to Bobby Lashley here, have John Cena come back in maybe a couple weeks or whatever, even it, it, as long as it's sometime within the, the near future, within a month or so, I think you can have John Cena either run into Theory again in the back, or if you just want to be blatantly obvious and have a whole segment with you, you can obviously do it in the ring. But however you want to begin their interaction, and of course, depending on which route you want to go with that also, I think that would be a good crutch and a good maybe foundation for John Cena to kind of start off of, you know, mention how he sees a lot of himself, obviously, in theory, and it's almost like looking in a mirror in a lot of ways, but he also sees a lot of the things that Cena would probably wish he did differently, and, you know, whatever that, you know, obviously, storyline-wise and, and character-wise, character -wise, just kind of go from there, whether it's, you know, just take yourself and your job and your role more seriously not focusing on the selfies and and stuff like that and and just kind of play off and, and just use that but I think you can you of course have a, a lot of different things that you can go and, and stem off of to start a few between Theory and Cena and of course if that even is what they're going to do with John Cena when he is officially making his return because even though he came back to celebrate his 20th anniversary this past Monday on Raw he said he doesn't really know when he's going to be back, essentially. So, But he is going to be back. So we'll see uh, what that ends up looking like. But long story short, and, and getting back to the match here, I'm going to officially pick Bobby Lashley to win the United States Championship here again. Although it would not surprise me to see Theory retain, but I think right now the better bet is to put the title on Lashley, since you're obviously not doing anything with him right now in the championship and the main event title scene. So... You, you, Bobby Lashley is someone who who does and again. I every, and I stop myself every time, but he's someone who absolutely. I don't even know if needs is the right word either. It's it's not, but you look at him and if you look at him and he doesn't have a championship, you question why and whatever that word is that kind of classifies that and kind of engulfs that that's what I'm looking for guys so help me out with that but you, you know what I mean and uh hopefully you you guys kind of uh, see where I'm coming from with that but I will move on here next to the tag team championship match the Usos are your tag team champions defending against the street profits for of course the undisputed tag team titles that is uh, we are almost actually a year into the reign of Smack Team, Smack Team, SmackDown Tag Team Champions for the Usos. Uh, kind of similar to Roman Reigns, where they both have a substantially long run with one title or one set of championships that they're holding, and they just newly won the additional to obviously make it the undisputed. Um, with that being said, I don't think it's time for them to lose it right now either. And as much as I again hate that kind of similar or. I'm, well, no, it's not similar. Um, but it, it just it's something about it where I just feel like the street profits could really use a, a good win here, and I think they're fun and they bring energy, especially Montez Ford. Right? He he enters a room and you just feel his presence without even like visually acknowledging he's there. Like I can imagine. So when you have him in an in an arena and on a live microphone, engaging with the fans, especially a live energetic crowd. And especially being the champion, right? It just it kind of catapults you to a different level. I think that that's a big deal, and I think that it would be dope to have the uh, Street Profits as the tag team champions again. Um, but again, that being said, I don't see them changing anything with the Bloodline storyline right now or anytime soon, for that matter. So, with that being said, it sadly enough, I I don't see the Usos losing the titles anytime soon. So. Officially, my pick here is to have the Usos retain. It kind of makes me nervous, though, what they do going forward. Um, I guess maybe until SummerSlam, they can... Well, no, because the Viking Raiders return and are now heels. So, I I don't know. I don't, it, it just sucks because the tag team division isn't deep at all. So, it's like, if, if they don't... If the Street Profits don't win, like, who do the Usos face against next, right? But then again... When I think the Usos are going to retain, who do they face? You know, it's it's kind of a catch-22. So, I think 
at this point, it doesn't really matter which team wins because the talent, and I don't want to say the talent pool is lacking because that's definitely not the case, but the options in the tag team division are, are kind of lacking right now, and it's not due to a lack of talent. It's just due to a lack of, of character development and, and storylines and, and protection. So it's just, it's kind of one of those things where it's not any of the wrestlers' fault, obviously, um, and that's the, normally the case for a lot of things, but it just sucks, you know, and it kind of makes a lot of things predictable and um, for a lot of matches. But again, all of that being said, I don't want to discredit what I think is going to be a fantastic match, and I think this is going to be probably 15, 18, 20-minute match. Uh, I just and I think we're gonna get something special from Montez Ford. I think we're gonna get probably the highest frog splash ever. I don't I don't know why, and maybe I'm just like kind of delusional right now. But this feels like a a, a bigger show to me, and maybe it's because it's in Las Vegas. Um, even though it's not in the stadium, but I I still feel like it's a, a pretty big show. I don't think that they have and the story has been and the hype going into it has been fine. I think it's probably been like. Maybe a B minus or maybe hovering to like a B, but just I feel like there's just something missing and I don't I don't really know exactly what it is. Uh, maybe it, again it is just that that main event match that main that that main focus point right your your championship. Uh, so with that being said, I'm not gonna ramble any more here or, or try not to at least on on this match in particular. But officially going with the Usos to retain here. Um, but with that being said, we will move on to Montez Ford's other half, that being the WWE Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair defending against Carmella. Of course, it was originally slated to be Rhea Ripley facing off against Belair, but Rhea Ripley is still out. Uh, apparently, it's it's something teeth related and maybe concussion related. I'm not sure. I, to be honest, haven't really looked into it too much. I it, I just feel weird like digging for injuries, right? Unless it's something that's been completely obvious. So whatever it is, just shout out to her, and I hope she's she's doing well. Um, she's, you know, one of the one of the women that really. I felt like it was, she was about to get like her time, especially being in the Judgment Day and seeing how they were getting their push in a new direction with Finn Balor being inserted and the pretty much destruction of Edge as the leader of the group. Uh, and I thought it was cool that they were all equals as well. And I, I was hoping maybe even at one point she could kind of forge and maybe be the more dominant one. And maybe if you don't want to call her the leader, just kind of have it more like more obvious that she's kind of the leader so to speak or they kind of the guys kind of look towards her um but with that being said I of course just hope and wish her nothing but the best but we are getting Carmella in her place which again it is what it is I think this is going to be a fine match and Bianca Belair and Carmella for that matter too is like a lot of people don't give her enough credit she's I'm not saying she's the best women's wrestler out there right but you know she she does she holds her own out in the ring and I think she does her role really well and she's consistent and I think especially since you know a lot of talent that transitioned from NXT black and gold brand especially they floundered on the main roster and a lot of them again not to any fault of their own they just weren't given tv time they were given a completely revamped character a different name or just whatever the situation is and it just wasn't them right I mean Karrion and Cross is a prime example so to see someone like her transition from NXT to the main roster she did a complete 180. She, I, in, in my opinion at least, she kind of catapulted and, and skyrocketed in, in her respect to a big star and a bigger deal. And she got so much better in the ring. You can tell she was definitely putting in the work to train and get better in ring-wise, right? And she just always has that star quality to her. So that was just kind of a, a given and just kind of something that was already naturally there. But it, again, look, I'm, and I'm not even saying like she's one of my favorite wrestlers, but I'm not going to sit here and shit on this match because it's Carmella. I think that's, that's I don't know, I just, I'm not a Carmella hater. Uh, and again, again, I'm not her biggest fan either, but she's, she's fine, you know, she, she does great work, or she does fine work in the ring, you know, she, she's made great improvement is what I was trying to say, so... I think for no other reason, uh, you we shouldn't shit on her, you know? I think you shit on the people who have just remained stagnant, and you, you can't say that for her. And especially with whatever role that she's been given, she's kind of 
made the best of it. You know, she was doing that shit with the with the dance break, her and our truth a few years back, and uh, she made it work. You know, they both made it work. So again, I don't, I didn't really expect to kind of go on a Carmela like praise fest here, but you know, I. I I gotta give credit where credit is due. So, with that being said, though, I do not think this is her time. I think she is just, uh, sadly, a replacement for Rhea Ripley. I, again, even if Rhea Ripley was here, and I guess that would obviously depend on what the bill would have been these past few weeks and what the focal, focal point would have been, but I, I would have probably still predicted Bianca Belair to win. Um, and again, I, I hold that that other prediction with the Rhea Ripley because that's not an official match. Uh Um, because, uh, just depending on how much and how serious they were going to be taking the judgment day, I could have easily seen them putting the title on Rhea and that would have just even given more kudos and more, more credit to her kind of being the, the leader visual and the leader figure in that group. But that's not the, the point of the prediction here. The, this is for the raw women's championship, not regarding judgment day. So Bianca Belair is officially getting my prediction here. I think this is going to be a, a good match. Uh, I don't really expect anything too spectacular, but I think this is going to be a, a fine match. Um, so yeah, I think Bianca wins, and it just it serves its purpose, and we just kind of move on from that. Next up on the card, we have Raw, or I'm sorry, SmackDown Women's Champion Ronda Rousey facing off against Natalia for, of course, the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh. Look, it's no secret at this point either. I think it's even been in a couple documentaries that WWE themselves has have produced on the network um, that Natalia was a big figure in training Rousey when she was first making her debut in the company a few years back. And they're pretty good friends. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really obviously stay up to date on whether they're best friends, but uh, they were at one point or really close friends for that matter. And look, I the things that... They were saying on and the things that Ronda Rousey, before we get into the match here itself, um, the things that Natalia and Ronda Rousey especially were saying to each other last week on SmackDown, when Ronda made a comment of in regards to Natalia mutilating her body for I I don't even know the exact the the exact quote I just thought about it now um but the I re- definitely remember the mutilation part of the uh the statement there to her body and it's just to get I think to like advance in the in the main event or some shit like that you guys it whatever it's it's not really important but the just the the phrase and the words and the way Rhonda went after Natalia I think verbally on the mic shows the comfort level I think right because you definitely wouldn't say in in WWE of course right um, if this was AEW, it may be slightly different, but your talent in WWE are not going to go out on TV and say shit like that about each other, which is kind of personal, obviously, you know, um, and, and without it being cleared in advance. So I think that's a, a big sign that this match is probably going to be good. And this and it just kind of shows their chemistry and how close they are. Again, this hasn't been the best for you, right? I mean, Natalia fucking came out dressed up as Ronda Rousey pushing a, a baby stroller last week. So this isn't the the, the world's greatest uh, build into this uh, or feud build in, into this match itself. So it, in I think it could have been a lot better, um, but it definitely could have been a lot worse. So I think the the main thing that I could see happening here, though, because after this, and unless you have Bailey kind of up deck or on deck rather to kind of come out. I think that, and I'm not saying come out necessarily on Money in the Bank, but within the next couple weeks, uh, I don't think that you really have many other options on the SmackDown brand for Ronda Rousey's opponent going into SummerSlam. So I think you need to start a build here soon. And I think this would be a, a good way to start it. So my opinion, and maybe it's just me being biased again because I've been waiting for this match for years now, I think that this would be a good way to introduce Shayna Baszler into the fold officially and have this be the beginning of the build to them at SummerSlam. I think it's it's kind of a layup too, if you if you think about it. Shayna Baszler is Natalia's tag team partner and so they've obviously have chemistry, they're obviously tight. If we're just kind of looking at black and white, Shanda is technically a heel a, a bad guy and Ronda Rousey is supposed to be a good guy. So 
that's a shoe in right there. Obviously, they're not going to like each other, even if they're supposed to be friends. Um, and of course, they were a part of the four horsewomen of MMA. Um, with and that kind of didn't really go anywhere in WWE. But I think, and as much as one point years ago, I thought you this actually could have. You know, it's crazy to say now, but I thought that you could have even gotten Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey at one point at WrestleMania. Um, but with that being said, I think SummerSlam is is just as good, right? It's just, it's the number two pay per view of the year. So I think that if you start either Saturday on Money in the Bank or within the next week or so, and and really put a serious build going forward and really take Shayna Baszler seriously, I think you could really get a lot out of this match, especially having them face off in Las Vegas, where that's a fight town and a fight city. So I just think it's kind of a no brainer. I am I don't really know where else they would go. Like I said, unless Bailey is planning on making her return, and of course, if they plan to keep her on the SmackDown brand, which it, it, I think they're they're really have no choice at this point. Raw is, is kind of good. Look, no division is, is incredibly deep at this point. Um, but I think SmackDown needs Bailey more than Raw needs Bailey at this point. So my official pick here is Ronda Rousey retaining her title. And I think probably what I could see happening and uh, what I would do, if, even though it's not the best, and or what I could see WWE doing, I'll say, is having either Shayna Baszler come down and make her her way to the ring with Natalia from the beginning during her entrance or at some point make you know whether she's running down to the ring or just walking down to the ring if the, either the referee is down or just she just decides to randomly walk down to the ring <laughs> um I think that Shayna is going to try to back or try going to try to interfere and it's going to backfire and I think that's going to cost Natalia the match I think that sets the kind of wedge between them as a tag team so you kind of don't have to worry or focus on the tag team. And, and God, I mean, we haven't even heard anything else about the women's tag team titles since we're supposed to get a, a tournament to crown the new women's tag team champions. Um, and again, I am not bitching or complaining about not having women's tag team champions. I don't think we need them. I'm completely happy with them being on the back burner and, and possibly not returning. So my opinion there, but... Wrapping it up for this match in particular, officially again, Ronda Rousey is my pick to win here. I think this is going to be either the start to the build between Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey, either at Money in the Bank itself or within the next couple weeks going forward. Moving on here, guys, we have the next match on the card being the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. The participants, of course, are Lacey Evans, who recently made her return and has already had about as many <laughs> character turns as the big show. I was going to say something else, but we'll keep it at that. Um, Lacey Evans versus Alexa Bliss versus Liv Morgan versus Raquel Rodriguez versus Asuka versus Shotzi and, of course, versus Becky Lynch. Whew. This... This one is, both both ladder matches are a little hard to predict, in my opinion. I think you can go a lot of different directions, and I think that's why it makes it so hard to predict, which is a good thing, you know? And, and kudos to WWE for not making it blatantly obvious who they're going to choose. Whether they're the most exciting and the best options is, is another story, but I think with what they have been working with, and what, or what they have chosen to work with, and the stories that they've chosen to tell. I think this these these participants and both sets of matches are the best. And I think, in my opinion, it's... I don't want to say it's, it's obvious because you can, again, go a lot of different ways. But in, I think what I would do is, is kind of obvious. So maybe, again, that's why I feel like it, it, it's kind of, you know, blatant to a lot of people out there. Uh, but what I would probably do here... And as much as I would love to put it on someone else, but I, I would give the briefcase to Becky Lynch. And I say that kind of feeling like a hypocrite because I am someone who, you know, especially with these type of matches, I feel like you can really use it to catapult and, and give someone a boost who has not necessarily been in the main event picture either at all or frequently or has been in there in quite some time. So... I think you could make a case for Lacey Evans, even though I, I wouldn't make my case. But I think you could make a case, especially, like I said, with her return. Um, and, and maybe, look, it just feels like she's gone through a lot of turns, but she obviously hasn't. Um, but I, I think you 
it would just make sense, right? The feel good, her story, her kind of feel good story. This will kind of happily or kind of put a, a nice little bow tie on that rather and then start her journey towards the women's championship. I don't think it's you can kind of, kind of rule out Alexa Bliss and Asuka as much as I hate to say it and, and Shotzi for that matter. You can maybe put her as a dark horse Shotzi, but I don't really see that. Um, and you know maybe maybe they could if they don't plan on having Bailey come back anytime soon or they have her going on Raw or whatever and they need another heel to face against Ronda, maybe they could put it on Shotzi or maybe just, I don't know, I maybe it's not, maybe you shouldn't rule that one out as quickly as I was thinking to, but um, she's going to be kind of my, my dark horse pick here, unless, and I'm not counting any like surprise return regarding Bailey or anything like that, I'm just sticking with the participants that we have here in the match itself already, so my dark horse pick would probably surprisingly in that respect be Shotzi, but I'm going to go with Becky Lynch, Becky Lynch officially. Um, like I was about to say earlier, I she obviously doesn't need to win this match to get a, another title shot. She, be, just being Becky Lynch, gets a shot, you know, and she's in the main event. She's, she's Becky Lynch, you know. It kind of just speaks for herself. But I think why you give her the briefcase is a better reason and a better focus point as or than anything else because I think she can kind of go the Seth Rollins version of of the crazy heel where she's just kind of obsessed and she's just obsessed with getting back to where she feels that she's rightfully rightfully deserves and that's her championship and in the main event title picture and the main event scene and headlining pay-per-views and being on the posters and all that shit so I think that's why I would put my money on Becky Lynch to win the Money in the Bank briefcase here. And I think you could draw it out. And I think that's that's going to be the best part about it. Having her come out and have her obnoxious character now come out and torment poor Bianca Belair. And just kind of tease Cash again just to kind of get in the head and, and drive Bianca Belair crazy to where she just offers to put up the championship. I don't know. I think you could go a lot of different routes with that. So... I am officially going to pick Becky Lynch here, but my dark horse pick is Shotzi. The next and final match on the card that we have here is my prediction to be the main event. No surprise, the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. We have Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus versus Omos versus Sami Zayn versus Riddle. And I believe there is still one spot open. Um, I think there was going to be a qualifying match. But if I'm not mistaken, I think Ezekiel won that. I don't know why I'm kind of losing my mind here, but I'm pretty certain Ezekiel won that. But um, to be honest, it, it doesn't really matter because uh, either who that is or Ezekiel is not my pick to win here. I think you can kind of narrow it down to McIntyre, Riddle, and Seth Rollins. Sorry to everyone else. Um, You can make a case for Sheamus. Or you make, obviously, you can make a case for all of them. But I think those three in particular are stronger than any of the other participants. With Drew, I'm going to kind of rule him out just kind of right away out of my narrowed down to three list here. Um, I think especially, look, number one the reason is they're going to Wales in, I believe it's September. He's already pretty much declared that he has a championship match, so... You don't need to have him win here. And I don't think Drew is the type of babyface that, of course, is is going to run in and, and do like a surprise cash-in. I don't see him doing that at all. And then what's really the fun in, in predicting the match when you have the briefcase? I mean, when RVD did it, it that was different. And it was, it was obviously, the, the briefcase was still very fresh at that point as well. But it was just different and it had a different vibe. But... Drew just isn't that type of babyface to to I, I do anything really with the briefcase, so I'm gonna rule him out. But it, I keep him in my top three winning here because I think you could they could definitely if they're nervous or they just need a, a comfort pick and comfort decision, they being WWE, I could see them putting in on Drew. Where I kind of get torn is maybe oddly enough between Rollins and Sami Zayn. And for two very different reasons. Um, 
and you know, it's just, it's crazy because Sami Zayn is just Sami Zayn. Um, and, and he's just so amazing. But I say that because you, you know, he's not going to win the championship, even if he cashes in the uh, briefcase itself. But the main reason he wants to win the briefcase is to protect the bloodline and, and to protect Roman Reigns. He's an honorary ooze, right? So of course he's going to want to protect his, his bloodline, his familia. So, uh, I don't know why I spoke Spanish there. They're not Spanish. <laughs> um, I do know why. Side note and real, real life talk. Um, I've been working on my Spanish and I'm working on learning Espanol and I've been trying to, uh, use it more at work. We have a lot of Spanish speakers who come into the, my place of business. So I've been trying to learn Spanish a lot and I've been using, uh, Duolingo. Uh, so shout out to them. They should sponsor the show. Um, but I've been using that a lot lately and I've just been randomly using Spanish words. So, uh, that's kind of like a, a, a uh, not really fun fact cause you guys probably don't care, but just a little tidbit for you. So if you guys randomly hear Spanish words, uh, that's why, and I don't mean it for any other reason. It's just me just randomly saying and incorporating my real life, <laughs> just self into the podcast here, but Moving on and back to the show and to the, the more importantly, the, the main event here. I think as much as you can, and as much fun as it would be to have the briefcase on Sammy, I think Seth Rollins needs it more. I think Seth Rollins went through a lot losing three times in a row to Cody, three times in a row to Cody Rhodes. Uh, I'd say that five times fast, but I think that Seth needs this and I think Seth is going to be fantastic with the briefcase kind of like your Becky Lynch but just amped up by like a thousand um with how obnoxious he is uh I mean the life alone carrying the briefcase you just it's kind of a visual that I I can already picture so do I see him winning and cashing in at SummerSlam like they're pretty much insinuating and and blatantly calling out at this point no, I don't. I think it's it's all hype, and especially for him, I think he's going to want to work everyone up and, and get Roman and Brock worried that he is going to cash in, and then he doesn't, you know? Or he even goes as far to come out and tease that he's going to and then just makes his way to the back. Um, I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't go that far, but it, again, it's Seth, because um, then it would be like, well, if they were down, for instance, then why wouldn't he do that and just steal the victory? So it, it gets kind of dicey when you get that close, but... Seth's character is just perfect for the money in the big briefcase. Uh, I think it's it's just kind of... And, and that's why it was so hard for me to choose between him and Zayn because they're both kind of ob- obnoxious in their own different ways and their own reasoning. So Sammy, I could see winning it and, and using it to protect Roman. And then Seth, I can see win- winning it and using it to torment Roman and to just torment everyone. And I think that... I don't know. I cashing in. I'm I'm going to hold off on getting too deep into that right now, but I I just for the record right at least as of right now as of this recording on the prediction show, if Seth Rollins does win, I don't see him cashing in at SummerSlam. And if he does, I think it's I mean as much as it, as poetic as it would be as well, I think it'd be kind of a waste cuz you're kind of blatantly giving it away. So if if you want to go that far, you can just make it a triple threat. Even though I guess it would take away the whole purpose of cashing in and kind of having lightning strike twice type of scenario, which would be kind of cool as well, but I don't see Seth winning and defeating Roman Roman Reigns for both titles, first of all, and unless they make a stipulation or an indication where it's just for one of the tag or one of the titles, um, and that, of course, being the WWE title, since Reigns has held the Universal Championship for, what, like 500 and some days now or something crazy to that effect, so my... And a, a Riddle is up there as well. Um, Riddle, I think, is a a good candidate, but I don't see them going back to Riddle again. Um, I think with the whole stipulation that they made with Riddle against Reigns that he's not going to face Reigns again for the title, I think that kind of it was their way out, and this is going to be their, their kind of way out as well. And just kind of like solidifying that at least. Um, I mean, and you could make a, a case on the on the flip side as well that since they made that stipulation, he had to do what he had to do to get a shot at the or at the heavyweight championship again. So he went through hell, um, and that being the ladder match, to win his opportunity and his chance to face the championship, and rightfully so. And it can't be denied because he has a contract. So you can definitely, definitely make a good case for a riddle there. Um, 
but I, I don't think it's as fun. And I think with Riddle, kind of maybe to a, a lesser effect of, of Drew McIntyre, with Riddle's version as a babyface, you don't want him to really go that route. Because I see him, as long as he maintains his babyface character, I think that you want him to be the good guy. Like, the, the clear-cut good guy is as ironic as that may be for a lot of different reasons. Um, and again, to me, calling your match just really isn't that exciting. Because what what difference is that than just ch- challenging the champion at a random pay-per-view during the year right or a random ple during the year so that's why i don't really just want a baby face to win for that reason alone so i'm officially gonna go and it's like, god as much as it as much fun as it would be to see zane win the briefcase uh i my my money here is going to be on rollins i think that they can really get a lot out of rollins being the briefcase holder and they can definitely drag it out as well and i think they should of course past SummerSlam. um but I think he deserves it too, and I think, and I will use that word, and I think he needs it here after what he's done with for the build with Cody. I think that was just phenomenal and and, and very well done. So shout out to him for what he did and and everyone involved in the the layout of that. So that being said, that is the main event, guys. And I think, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be a really good paper ple. Oh, I was doing so well, um, but I think that. Again, it is still missing something, um, but I think the the ladder matches themselves are going to be very, very good. So I think this is a PLE that you guys should should check out. You know, I'm not saying cancel any plans, um, but whatever you guys end up doing this weekend, please be safe. And as always, I thank you for listening to the pod. And side note, if you heard my dog in the background, I apologize. Uh, it is close to dinner time, and she is sensing it. So take care, guys. Have a safe and fantastic weekend.